Recently, an eight-month-old baby was brutally raped in the capital. She was found in a pool of blood and she had to undergo a three-hour long operation. I went and visited the girl in the hospital when she was battling for her life in the ICU. The way she was screaming, the pain that she was experiencing, I don't think I have words to describe that. It is absolutely true that it was not the rape of an eight-month-old baby. It was the rape of the Delhi Commission for Women. It was my rape and it was the rape of this entire country. It's really unfortunate that every day the national capital territory of Delhi is experiencing around six rapes, three of which are children. One-year-old, eight-month-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old. We've reached epidemic proportions of child rapes in our country. It's really, really shameful that the national capital of Delhi is termed as the rape capital of the world. Presently, I think it is really extremely sad that we are facing this kind of a situation. What is even more sad is that there are systemic rapes of little girls. Now this eight month old baby for the next 16 years probably of her life will spend trying to prove the world, to, to, uh, trying to prove to the world that yes she was raped. How unfortunate it is. The fact is that once some men or a man rapes a little girl and then the entire system rapes her. As the Delhi Commission for Women Chief, I say this with great responsibility. The fact is that nobody is scared in our country. The fact is that Delhi Police has reported around 31,446 crimes against women and girls in Delhi in the past three years and less than 150 were convicted. 31,446 crimes and less than 150 convictions. No wonder we are called the rape capital of the world. This is what needs to change. In Pakistan, recently, a girl called Zainab, seven-year-old girl, she was brutally raped and murdered. The entire Pakistan came down on the streets. As a result of that, within one month, a Pakistani court convicted that man guilty of raping this girl with death penalty. And in India, it's been five years since Nirbhaya was brutally gang raped and murdered. Even till date, Nirbhaya has not got justice in this country. But I think we need to create systems to ensure deterrence. If there is no deterrence, if there is no certainty and swiftness of punishment, I think nothing will change. What is it that the Delhi Commission for Women is demanding? We are demanding that within six months, Rapists of little children at least should be given the death penalty. Until we have strong deterrence, nothing is going to change. Ever since we have been demanding this, I have noticed that at least three states have come up with stronger laws. Uh, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, they are saying they pass laws which give death penalty to child rapists. But is that going to change the system? I really don't think so. I don't think just mere pieces of legislation, mere pieces of paper will change the system. Until we can ensure certainty and swiftness of punishment, until we ensure that within six months, under all circumstances, the guilty is punished, till then no change will come. And how will we ensure that? We need police accountability, we need police resources, we need better forensics, and we need fast track courts. Until we have these systems, there is whatever change we are talking about is just existing on the paper. Let's talk about police. Let's talk about the policing. Delhi police has been demanding for the past 10 years 66,000 police personnel from the center. Till date, they haven't even received one. As a result, when you go to each and every and any police station across Delhi, you will see that each and every police station is functioning at half is functioning at half its sanctioned strength. Can you imagine? The fact is, if you go down to each and every place, there is complete lack of police resources. I have myself met so many police officers during my tenure and many of them are really working hard. But how do they protect the people of Delhi with half police resources? 66,000 police personnel need to be provided to the Delhi police immediately. Secondly, what about the accountability of the police? The center has been trying to create a software to digitize the functioning of the entire police across the country for the past 10 years. 
What does this mean? If there is no software, the police commissioner right in the morning has no clue as to which particular station house officer is performing well, which officer is not, how many cases are pending where. I think this software needs to be created urgently. How does it reflect on the ground? On the ground, life is very different. On the ground, uh, police accountability is almost nil. Delhi, Delhi Commission for Women, as the chief of the Delhi Commission for Women, I receive a lot of complaints from across the capital about poor policing. I receive complaints from women and girls across wherein they are saying that there are illegal sale of liquor, illegal sale of drugs that is happening across and it needs to be curbed because the first and the foremost people to get affected with this sale is the women and the girls. They are not able to get out of their house after 6 p.m. because within their lanes, within their houses, this illegal trade is flourishing. When we go and find out, when we try and inspect, and we, when we try and investigate, we are able to catch all these local dorms, local goons red-handed. In a recent raid, I was able to discover 350 bottles of illegal liquor. We got it confiscated by the police. It's strange that the women there got to know about it, we know about it, but the police somehow never seems to know about it. I think that is what needs to change. It's so unfortunate that when we raised this issue, one of our girls who volunteered for the commission and who informed the commission about this illegal liquor racket in Narela, she was paraded naked by the uh, liquor mafia for one and a half kilometers in the national capital territory of Delhi. And that liquor mafia also had the audacity to threaten that the next to be paraded naked will be the DCW chief, which is me. So you parade us naked, you rape us, you murder us, but we will continue to fight. But this is the situation, this is the condition of the police accountability in the capital. Every time when we go and do these raids, it is, it's really shocking. All the people, they know about it, the commission knows about it, police never seems to know about it. And all these local goons, they are challenging the commission every time on record, I have record, where they say that we, we give money to the police. What is it that you will do with us? Again, if you look at the accountability of the police in more detail, look at GB Road. GB Road is a road that exists right in the center of Delhi, which is the national capital of the country. Right in the center of Delhi, three kilometers from, up from the parliament, there is a road, an extremely infamous road called the GB Road. That road houses the red light area, it houses brothels, it houses 5,000 women and girls from the poorest of the poor places across the country. They are brought here, they are sold for pittance, they are made to serve 30 men in a day and they are given all kinds of injections to make their body parts grow. A police station exists at 200 meters from this road. I get to know about it, the NGOs get to know about it, together we rescue so many girls. But the police somehow just never knows about any girl being brought in or brought out. I think police needs to set, set its accountability and we need to create systems so that at least systemic rapes should stop. Each and every girl in GB Road is being raped day in and day out in the complete knowledge of the system. I think this needs to stop. Thirdly, it is extremely important to have proper forensics. We issued a notice to the Forensic Science Department and we got to know that over 1500 samples had got putrefied because they were pending for so many years. Now these samples could have been samples of child rape, they could have been samples of gang rape and they've just got putrefied. Who is accountable? Who is responsible? I think these questions need to be asked and accountability needs to be fixed. And lastly but not the least, it is important to have fast track courts. Like I said, once a girl gets raped by some men and then the entire system rapes her. Again and again, even Nirbhaya was asked that why is it that you know she was traveling in an auto, in a bus and why not in an auto? Why was she wearing what she was wearing? Who was that man? Why at 12 o'clock in the night? All these questions when they are asked again and again to the survivor, they completely belittle the spirit of the survivor. And that is why we need daily hearings. We need daily hearings in fast track courts. The Delhi Commission for Women for the past two and a half years, we have been taking up this issue again and again and again. It's almost now like I'm standing with a begging bowl in my hand, just with folded hands in my hands and asking the system, please change. I have met leaders, I have gone to court, I have done everything possible. I've written letters, I have protested 
and here I am still demanding for the change. On our part, in one year we've handled 12,000 cases. We have heard over 3.16 lakh calls on our 181 helpline. We have assisted 5,500 sexual assault survivors in various uh, uh, cases across uh, different courts. 1869 counseling sessions, 7,500 grassroots visits, 55 recommendations to various governments. And I'm proud to say that we are the only commission across the country which functions on Saturdays officially and unofficially we are functioning even on Sundays as well as nights. I cannot remember one day in my life where I was sitting idle. That is the kind of work that I'm doing and that is the kind of work that my team is doing. But when I saw that eight month old baby, I think a part of me died forever. I really felt that her pain was running in my blood. I really felt totally devastated. I felt that what is the use of all these statistics that I'm giving at the end of the day, we were not able to save an eight month old baby. And that is why I decided to put at least a comma in my life. On 31st January 2018, I went and visited her for the next 37 days until the 8th of March, which is International Women's Day. I launched a Satyagraha non-violent protest. I did not go back home for these 37 days. I worked during the day, met, uh, uh, did my statutory uh, responsibilities in the evenings, went for inspections and then came back again to the office and slept in the office. For 37 days I did this Satyagraha because I really did not want my life to move on. I did not want to change the newspaper, change the file and move on. I continued with my responsibilities but I launched a Satyagraha. And during the Satyagraha we launched a people's movement. It's been 12 years of activism, of being in the government, of all of that. And I think at the end of it, I realized that the change will only come through people's movements. And that is why we launched a movement called Rape Roko, which literally means stop rapes. This movement demands systemic change. We are encouraging people to join the movement when thousands of people will stand up for change. I think change will come. We are demanding systemic change. We want that at least rapists of children should be given the death penalty within six months. At the same time, we are also working towards a mindset change. It is important to break the culture of silence amongst uh, silence on rapes. It is so sad that an eight-month-old baby gets raped and there is no noise. The, the silence of the system is saddening, but the silence of the people was much more saddening. And that is why the Rape Roko movement was launched. We are trying to also change mindsets. What is it that we do? There are volunteers, they're going to different places, they're talking to people about the rape of the eight-month-old, about rapes in general. I'll give you an example. So three girls from Delhi University, they were standing in one of the uh, upscale markets of Delhi with boards of rape roco trying to engage people into a conversation. So some men approach them and tell, tell those girls that if you wear small clothes, obviously you will be raped. There were men there, there were boys there, there were girls there, there were uncles, there were aunties. All of them jumped in the conversation and gave these three men a piece of their mind. And I think that is what is important. After that one and a half hours conversation, I think a little bit of their mindset might have changed. Similarly, around 500 of our volunteers, male volunteers, one day decided that they wanted to challenge the system wherein the society just tends to blame the survivor. So what they did was they did a very innovative form of protest. They went shirtless only in their boxer shorts and they had painted all over their bodies that we as men feel comfortable in our boxer shorts. We feel safe in our boxer shorts. How many clothes does a woman have to wear in order to feel safe? They also asked what were the clothes that the eight month old baby was wearing. They said that it is not her skirt which is short. It is the mindset, it is the sick mindset of certain men, which is horrible. And because through this, I think it's an important process. When men start engaging with men, la la lasting change will definitely happen. Within two weeks of launching the Rape Roco movement, around five and a half lakh letters were received by the commission addressed to the Honorable Prime Minister, all demanding stringent punishment against child rapists to be delivered in six months. I think this was phenomenal. Thousands and thousands of people joined in. And on 8th of March at Central Park, we had over 20,000 people just standing there 
peacefully but with a strong message that now rapes need to end. This is an ongoing movement. We are continuing with the movement. I strongly believe that one person has the power to bring about change if the cause is right. I started alone, but today the Delhi Commission for Women is not alone. We are having thousands and thousands of volunteers within the country, outside the country, all demanding change. 12 years back, I decided to give up my job. I'm a computer engineer. I decided to give up my job. I decided to give up my financial security. And I decided to take on a different path in my life. And here I am 12 years later, an activist and the DCW chief. It's been a very, very difficult journey. For 10 years, I just simply volunteered. I have no money today. I get a salary of 30,000 rupees, which is not much. I manage in that and I have no property. But let me tell you, I'm one of the happiest people on this earth. There are people who are gunning for me. There are vested interests within the system and outside the system who are trying to attack me every now and then. I really don't know. I really don't know whether I will live for another day. But today I am alive and today I am fighting. They can kill me, they can jail me, but they cannot kill my spirit. And that is why we are fighting and I feel. <laughs> and I strongly believe that this movement will not be successful until people like you, until each and every one person joins. Now it's time for you to decide. We need your wholehearted support. If you do not join us today, God forbid, it may, a time may come in your life where you may repent. If you do not, do not join us today, I really don't know, maybe tomorrow your own children might ask you certain questions. If you do not join us today, God forbid, Something like this might happen with one of you. I think it is high time that all of us join in this struggle. It is not the struggle of Swati Maliwal alone or the struggle of that eight-month-old baby. I think it is the struggle of each and every person who is alive and who is craving for change. So please join the movement.